recording. Hey everybody, Paul Vanuk. I am the technical editor for Recording Magazine, and today I am in Shell Rock, Iowa, at uh, Chandler Limited, and I'm in the secret lair uh, studio of Wade Goki, who is the uh, Chandler's chief designer, owner, uh, the brains behind the operation. Thanks, Paul. So. Thanks for uh, having us out, Wade. Uh, we're here specifically uh, because of a brand new product that Chandler is coming out with, and that is the new Chandler Limited TG microphone. You know, uh, two years ago, Wade came out with um, the first uh, microphone in Chandler's line, which was the, uh, it's a really long name, the Abbey Road Red Mike, is that is that all of it? I Abbey. don't remember what the official name is. <laughs> Abbey, Abbey Road Red Mike. It's a, it's a tube microphone, but it's a, a it's notable for two reasons. One, it's, uh, I believe, the first mic or one of the first mics in history to actually have the microphone preamp built into the microphone itself. And it's also the, the first microphone to bear the Abbey Road uh, EMI logo and actually be part of their brand in, what, 50 years? 50 years, 50 years. I think they say, yeah. Yeah, so this mic that we're looking at today that we we're talking through, doing the uh, interview through, is the Abbey Road uh, Chandler Limited TG mic. So it'll be the second mic. I guess I'll from here I'll turn it over. What do you want to tell us about the TG mic? Geez, so much. <laughs> um, well, it's really important to me to do mics with Abbey Road because they have such a history of of you know using the microphones and making microphones famous kind of you know over there um it's the reason a lot of us know about u47s and things like that and um i just always felt like part of their it was such a part of their legacy that we needed to pursue that more you know and then when you combine that with i think microphones are becoming more and more important to recording nowadays as more things go into the computer um that initial translation as you're taking it in there is even more important so I wanted to do something that I liked the sound of I guess you know and that used kind of these historic circuits um, and kind of put them in where a place where I thought they belonged in with the Abbey Road gear you know right now in the uh, in the Abbey Road line and in, in Chandler's Abbey Road line there's essentially two series you've got the the TG series which was the later period 68 and on uh, solid state desk and then before that you've got the red series which was was tube or valve based mm -hmm. so presumably obviously the TG mic this is a solid state microphone yes, um, yes. Uh, this one uh, does not have a microphone preamp built into it this is right right okay. I I didn't really want to repeat myself you know like I try to think of it as a creative thing all of this as much as possible and I didn't want to just be like oh well here's a TG mic and it's just like the red mic except it's solid state instead you know um, I wanted it to have its own vibe its own approach its own thing that made it special so that's why we ended up kind of going with this NABIEC EQ section that was out of the mastering desk okay. um, it was kind of uh, a way that gave the mic a number of different characters um, allowed it to be really versatile to fit in different niches where normally you may say well I want to use a FET 47 on kick drum but I want to go to a U87 or 414 on guitar it can easily cover both of those by switching the presets on the back um, and then you know <clears throat> obviously I wanted to include the tone of the TG that I think people have started to kind of you know we're known for and that people like us for um, so I think it, it has a lot to offer with all that stuff combined in one. So let's let's start with the uh, the, the TG tone. Obviously, you know that TG's kind of been known. It has a very punchy sound. Mm. It's it's got kind of this little cool top end thing that it does. Uh, can you explain the TG sound or distill it down simply, <laughs> or how do you take the TG sound and take it from one of your microphone preamps mm -hmm. and put that TG sound in a mic? What is you know if somebody says that to you, what is the TG sound? Yeah, um, I answer it. I think there, like you said, there's a broadness to the sound, a punchiness, um, a, like a depth, and then, but also the clarity on top and the kind of just just enough sparkle that it sounds sort of open and, um, yeah, and that's exactly what I wanted to include in this. And it's all every circuit in there is is a TG circuit. It's not like, oh, we you 
I built this thing and then I stuck a little TG thing on the end. You know, everything in there is a TG based circuit. Um, there's three different TG amps. Um, so it's full of that kind of color and sound that I guess people if hopefully like in our products, you know. Awesome. Now for controls on the mic, um, first of all, you've got um, the the e, let's talk about the EQ that you, you just mentioned. There's mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a, on the back of the mic, there's a five position switch that changes from uh, essentially flat, which isn't flat tonally, but it's it's kind of the TG mic in its natural untamed state. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> you kind of go uh, there's there's two positions kind of in each direction. Uh, yeah. What are those? Where did you get the idea from? Right. Okay, well that was taken directly off the mastering desk. Um, it had an input module, which was kind of the center, the brain of the mastering desk. One of the controls on there was the NAB IEC equalizer. And that was that was for tape machines. That was then. for tape machine curves. So like when they would take a tape from America and play it back on a European machine, instead of completely recalibrating the system, all they did was go and they're ready to go. So it's it a shortcut you know but why I loved it is it's a passive thing it's designed super cool um, it's deep it's open it can you know and I run things through the mastering desk that I'm lucky to own just to click that on um, and add its flavor to, to things when I'm recording or mixing even and, and so that circuits probably if I had to pick one thing from the whole Abbey Road thing that would be the thing I've used the most and and like the most from it all and so I just thought it would be a really neat way to make the mic kind of shine and do some interesting things the curves on this are obviously modified so that it is more of a well this is a microphone and we're recording individual instruments it's not a we're playing back a tape and we need it to do this a little bit it's it's specifically suited for this microphone it's almost like having presets on a mic what, absolutely what what can you can can you kind of distill those down can you say you know position one is position two is right okay um positions four and five which is if you go to the right all the way those are the more i guess um slightly more extreme settings they're more uh more emphasis on the lows and especially and then some of the highs too uh, with five in particular having the most um, it's kind of just a gargantuan setting you know <laughs> um, is it like a smiley face like a loudness EQ or is well it no complex? there's there's more to it than that sure and it's working with obviously with the capsule and with how the TG amps are are um, voiced or whatever you want to say so there's a lot of in, in, in intricacy with the whole thing interacting together um, so like five is kind of the jumbo setting like if I would normally take a Poltec and want to beat the out of it with some low end you know I just go to number five instead like I used to do that on bass and I found while I was working on this oh I just flip it to five and maybe put some compression on and I'm ready to record bass I don't have to fuss around um, like guitar number four I love a lot if you have a really small um, guitar amp uh, four is kind of a broad low frequency emphasis with a nice sparkle on top and it just makes it sound kind of you know full and nice uh, little small things um, and those are the those are the British settings is that I don't even remember <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to check <laughs> four and five are this way um, there's more to it than that because they've all been modified right so saying well is that the British versus the American it's there's probably more to it it's changed a bit since then um and then one is the flat setting um if you want sort of just like you said the mic in its purest form um but that's a really nice balanced it's still right in the middle yeah straight up it's still f uh full um and and open but it's not quite as uh you know aggressive as say four and five um two is a treble only emphasis so if you just want to sparkle something up a little bit number two is the one uh, and then number one all the way to the left is just a wide gentle low frequency emphasis so if okay. you have kind of a small sounding source and you need to fill it out a little that's the way to go for that um, the other thing is the low cut uh, interacts with all the settings so like that that's a good se segue there there are four other settings that the that the mic has you've got um pattern switching oh yeah yeah between uh it's cardioid omni okay 
Um, you have a pad up top. Um, 10, sy- 10, 10 dB? Yes, it's 10 dB pad. There's a system A and B switch, which we'll get into, I guess. And then you have the low cut, which is um, out 50 and 90. Okay. Um, uh, those are meant to interact with the five settings. I worked a lot so that the low cut actually modifies the existing presets to make them more than they are, right? So example, if you go to 50, which has the most low frequency emphasis, um, or number five, sorry, <laughs> and then you switch on 50, it takes this sort of broad low frequency and starts to shave it off a little bit. And you, so you get different curves um, with that preset. Uh, and it works at the same way for all of them. So you and I should mention we're uh, actually we, we're talking through the mic, and I think we've got it. I, I don't know if I said this already, but on setting five, yeah, which I is guess we do, uh, right? which is I think that's your <laughs> I think that's your favorite, isn't it? No, 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 no. <laughs> you always get caught up in little things, right? Well, I'm going to use this week. It's number five. Next week, it's number four. You know. So tell me about uh, on the side. There's a switch that says system, and then it says A and B. What uh, what's the difference hmm. between A and B? System is uh, it started out from. Uh, I wanted a setting where you could handle extreme SPLs and the mic wouldn't ever be, you know, distorting. And so it started from that. Um, so system B, you can put on about anything and using it with the capsule sensitivity pad on the side, I, l- I haven't been able to distort it. And so okay. in situations where a 414 or a FET 47 might actually distort and they can take a lot, um, this will still stay together. So that, that was where it started from. But then it ended up being I tweaked it more, and it's actually tone um, differences between the two. So it has a double use. Um, a is a very TG setting. It's more direct, more in your face. It has that kind of you know emphasis in the mid range or whatever you, people talk about with the TGs. When you go to B, it cleans up a lot harmonically. It has about a fourth the harmonics of setting A, so okay. it's way cleaner. Um, it's also a touch less bright. So if you have a a source that's a little crispy or you want the mic just to be more of a chill mellow kind of sound b is the way to go for that it's a little less intense sounding even though this is a solid state mic um it does not use phantom power right and that, that's a big part of the design um so i was trying to make the least solid state sounding mic that the tg could ever be you know and i tested phantom power i built one that ran on phantom power and i built one that ran on an external supply and i thought the difference was night and day it was really noticeable um with phantom power you don't have the current you don't have control over what kind of voltages you want to use it has to be very small current to run only a few transistors and uh you have to keep the current of those transistors very small so to use a really high power amplifier like the tg is or like you know, an old Neve Class A circuit uses a lot of current, and that's part of why it sounds good. You can't do that in a microphone. You, so you can use a s- simple, small power, small voltage kind of circuit, and what does it do? It sounds small. Um, the other thing, too, is it lets me use that high voltage on the capsule, where most solid-state units function on a fraction of a volt, uh, solid-state microphones, on the capsule. Um, I'm using a full 50 volts on the capsule. Wow. So it becomes more sensitive. The more voltage you apply to a, a microphone capsule, the more sensitive it becomes. Um, so it, it opens up the sound. You, you look at that capsule, the amplifiers are changed. You're not using phantom power. Um, it all starts to go like this. Now this isn't uh, this is a smaller power supply. It's not like the yeah. Big... It's a little one. It's about this big. It's in a little <coughs> you know little square sort of thing. And um, and you've got the lighted capsule for the uh, yeah. We have the same, the LED like we did on the red. And uh, so what else comes with the kit? The shock mount. Oh right. Um, yeah, shock mount. It comes in a wooden box. Um, you get the little power supply, and then it it'll be all in a bigger sort of box that it comes in with foam. So that's uh, a little preview of the new TG mic, uh, which should be available by the time you see uh, this video and is featured in the January issue of Recording Magazine. It's being premiered at the uh, 2019 uh, Winter NAM show. I want to thank Wade for having us uh, come out, letting me hang out in the, the studio. Mm. And he's got a lot of cool top secret uh, gear that he's got in design here. And Uh-oh. Uh, you got to... <laughs> There's going to be some cool stuff coming in the next couple of years. So I know I'm pretty excited. Ah, um, 
Thanks, Paul. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click like on the link below. Also, stop by our website, recordingmag.com, for the best in all things recording, where you can also subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 32nd year. We'll see you soon.